this is just a short discussion of moment of the moment of inertia. When you're discussing kinematics, there are certain quantities that are associated with translational motion, that's motion going in a straight direction, backwards or forwards, and there are similar quantities that are developed for rotational motion. And there's a, quite a parallelism between those. And as you work out this parallelism, you will see that mass for the role played by mass in the translational motion is played by the moment of inertia I for rotational motion. You can find a table like this in the Hyperphysics website, which is a very good website. Um, most of this table is borrowed from them, but I added things a little bit differently. So this column is the translation or linear motion, and we're just using one dimension in order to show how this works. And this column is for rotational motion. So when we talk about where a position is specified, you specify it by location x in translational motion, and we'll specify it by the angle theta in rotational motion. Then you have velocity. There's linear velocity and angular velocity. Linear velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time, so dx by dt. For angular velocity, it's the rate of change of angle with respect to time, and call that omega. So we have velocity, omega associated with rotational motion, and the v is the velocity associated with the linear motion. Another derivative gives you acceleration, both for linear acceleration and then we have for angular acceleration also. Now continuing the same um, table, again, translational in the second column, rotational motion here in the third column, we have mass. Now in translational, I'm sorry, now for mass plays a role in translational motion, moment of inertia I plays the same role in, in rotational motion, and you can see that in his next equations. Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. Now we see how mass appears in this equation. The corresponding equation for rotational motion is not force, but torque. And torque equals moment of inertia I times angular acceleration. You can see the parallel there. Now look at momentum. Linear momentum is usually a p equals mass times velocity. Angular momentum is moment of inertia times omega. And we have work, force times distance, and uh, in rotational motion it's torque times angle, or change of angle. And now we're down to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy in translational motion is one-half mass times the velocity squared. In rotational motion, it's one-half moment of inertia times omega squared. So you can see a parallelism all the way down. And what plays into this is that mass uh, plays a role in translational motion. The same role is played by the moment of inertia in rotational motion. I just included this lecture here because so much of Stuart and Thomas in this chapter is devoted to these various moments of inertia. Um, and if you don't know where they came from, you might seem a little lost. I'm sure most of you know all this very well. Okay, so the moment of inertia, I'm going to derive it, is derived from the kinetic energy of a rotating body. So we have a body and rotational motion. And from trig, and what we just discussed a moment ago, angular velocity omega is Okay, you know what that is, and it's the same throughout the body, but the linear velocity depends on distance from the axis of rotation. So if you have a record player going like this, the part that's moving here has the same angular velocity. It goes through the same number of angles per unit time as a particle out there. But the one out here is moving much faster than the one in here, so that this record and this record player or CD, whatever, doesn't fly apart. Okay. Omega is the rate of change of angle with respect to time. Okay. And the velocity, the linear velocity of the particle here and the particle up here, that's the radius times omega. Now, if you have many discrete sections, you could add up the kinetic energy for this body. It would be the sum of the kinetic energy of each section. Kinetic energy is one half 
summing up mass times velocity squared. But we know that velocity in this case is radius times omega. So velocity squared then would be r squared omega squared. I'll put that into this situation right here. Okay, but the radius differs. The omega is always constant. I can pull that out. And so now I just have a sum over the mass times, it would be the mass at this particular ri. The mass here times the radius to that point. That, that sum over the um, object of mass times radius, and of course that turns into an integral, that is the first moment of inertia i. So then this becomes written one half i omega squared in parallel with the one half um, mass times velocity squared for translational motion.